Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hello, welcome everyone. Today for metal mediated synthesis, we will discuss transition metal carbenes. As you all know, carbenes are divalent carbon centers with two atoms attached to with it. Transition metal carbenes are the one where metal is associated with the carbon center and the carbon is attached with two different atom. Today, we will discuss the transition metal carbenes, how they are synthesized, how their names has appeared and also their reactivity pattern. Let us look at the transition metal carbene, what are those actually. So, transition metal carbenes are the one where metal is doubly coordinated with a carbon center and the carbon center is attached with A and B, two different atoms. Now, general classes typically features two types of carbon as you know Fischer carbon and the Stock carbon. These two type of carbon we have very distinct features. Fischer carbenes are electrophilic at the carbon center and the Stock carbene are nucleophilic at the carbon center. In addition, there are a number of characteristic features that differentiate the Fischer carbene from the Stock carbene. Let us look at one example of Fischer carbene and point out the characteristic of such carbene compound. Subsequently, we will discuss the stroke carbon with one example and their characteristic features. Let us try to look at Fischer carbon. So, Fischer carbon well first of all the egg it is easier if we try to remember one example of the Fischer carbon and one example of the Stock carbon. So, with one example we will try to discuss their inherent properties and the type of ligand that is associated with the metal center. One example that you might want to remember for the Fischer carbon is the one where you have the chromium complex. Let us look at the characteristic features. So, the chromium complex is associated with the carbene center with two atoms associated with the carbon center and this is a pentacarbonyl species. Now, if you look at this chromium complex very carefully, the chromium center is attached with some ligand and the carbon center is also attached with some substituent. Now, let us look at each of these features quite carefully. The chromium center as you have seen is associated with carbon monoxide. Now, these are the ones which are going to be your you know pi acceptor type of ligand. On the other hand, the carbon center is electrophilic in nature as you see in the chromium complex. Let us look at the characteristics one more time and carefully. So, you have chromium complex with pentacarbonyl associated with it. The carbon center over here that is electrophilic in nature. This is electrophilic in nature. In a moment, we will see the Stock carbon is nucleophilic in nature usually the metal center that is associated over here is the middle or late transition metal 
and these are having lower oxidation state. So, lower oxidation state and transition metals are late or middle, these are the characteristics of your Fischer carbene. Most importantly, you have pi acceptor ligands. These are the one the carbon monoxide are the one associated with the metal center directly which are pi acceptor in nature. On pi acceptor ligands on transition metals that is for example, you have carbon monoxide in this particular case. And the two atom that is associated with the carbon center they are often a pi donor. A and B are often pi donor. Okay. So, these are of two different types usually we can get alkoxide or NR2 type. So, as you have seen with the Fischer carbene, this is an example of a Fischer carbene of a Fischer carbene where you have chromium complex of pentacarbonyl species and the methoxide and phenyl is attached with the carbon carbene center. Now, chromium is directly associated with a pi acceptor ligand. The carbon center, the carbene carbon center is associated with and the, the L type ligand which is the pi donor ligand. That means, the methoxy you have or NR2 anything you can have, these are going to be electron donating in nature. And therefore, the carbene carbon center is electrophilic in nature, you can, you can draw a conjugation between the lone pair of the methoxy and to that of the carbene double bond. So, the carbon center at carbene is electrophilic in nature that is most important feature of the Fischer carbene. You have chromium complex over here you can have other middle or late transition metal complexes. Once again the main features you need to look at is whether carbene carbon is electrophilic or nucleophilic in nature. If it is electrophilic in nature it is going to be Fischer carbene. The atoms two atoms that are associated with the carbon carbene center that is going to be at least L type of donor that is it is the lone pair A is there on those hetero atom. Okay, let us look at one example of the Fischer carbene. So, Fischer carbene we have looked at now let us look at the Stroke carbene. These are the ones also alkylidine type of molecules. Okay. We can have a tantanum complex with neopentyl 3 and the classical this carbon center with the carbene. Now, this carbene as you will see this is delta negative, neopentyl are the one where you have CH2 tert butyl group associated with it. Okay. This is your neopentyl group. Now, this compound if you look at we have a higher oxidation state for the transition metal. In case of Fischer carbene this one was a lower oxidation state for the metal. Now, you have a higher oxidation state of the metal in this particular case this is tantanum 5 plus. The carbon center the carbene carbon center is nucleophilic in nature. So, the most importantly it is going to be nucleophilic as opposed to the electrophilic Fischer carbene center nucleophilic at carbon and you have higher oxidation state tantalum as you can see over here it is plus 5 oxidation state. So, higher oxidation state as opposed to Fischer carbene where usually it is a lower or middle oxidation state. Transition metal in this rock carbene these are earlier transition metal in nature. And most importantly you see the metal center is not associated with something which are pi acceptor in nature. 
this is not a pi acceptor ligand unlike carbon monoxide. So, non pi acceptor ligand is directly attached with the metal center, non pi acceptor ligand. This is very characteristics of your shock carbon and the two atoms that is attached with this carbon center, the carbene carbon center, they are not also pi donor. So, non pi acceptor, non pi donor type of complex will give you the shock carbon. The A and B are not pi donors usually these are the ones which are X2 type of ligand. So, these two carbenes we have discussed with one example is are very characteristic and their synthesis pattern is also very different. Fischer carbene and Stroke carbene are the two different type of carbene you can expect. Therefore, the reactivity of these two carbenes are also varying. For Fischer carbene, we have seen the carbon center is electrophilic in nature or the carbon you can think of delta plus. For the Stroke carbene, we have delta minus at the carbon center. For the Fischer carbene, the metal centers are the one which are middle or late transition metal the metal center is also associated with a pi acceptor type ligand. The carbon center of the Fischer carbene is attached to two different atom if it is A and B, none of or both of them or at least one of them should be pi donor in nature. This leaves the carbon center electrophilic in, in, in their characteristic. On the other hand, for the stock carbon, you have the carbon carbon center nucleophilic in nature that is delta negative. Most importantly, A and B that is associated with the carbon center are not a pi donor. The other ligand that is associated with the metal centers center is also not pi acceptor type. Therefore, as you can see the metal center that is associated for Stroh carbene is the earlier transition metal ones and their oxidation state is relatively high compared to the Fischer carbene one. Right. Now, let us look at the synthesis of these two different type of carbene namely Fischer carbene and the Stroh carbene. First, we will discuss the synthesis of Fischer carbon. So, we can start with a chromium hexacarbonyl species. Okay. We have let us say one carbon monoxide we are putting on the outside. Now, this phenyl lithium will react with one of those carbonyl center to give you CO 5 chromium phenyl species. Right? From there on we can have, so this is the species which is the usual carbene you can think of chromium double bond and O minus phenyl species. right? From there on if we have reacted with let us say for example, diazomethane we will get chromium this usual Fischer carbene complex where you, we have a pi donor type of ligand and pentacarbonyl is associated with the chromium species. Most importantly, this compound you can write down in a canonical form where you have minus and plus center at the carbon, carbon in the carbene center. Overall, you can write down as if the chromium is minus and 
OME is, uh, you know, OME is plus in nature, okay. So as you have in this synthesis what we have done is simply we have taken hexa chrome cobalto sorry hexa carbonyl chromium complex and reacted it with the organolithium reagent PHLI in this particular case. Now this organolithium reagent it has reacted with one of the carbon monoxide center to give rise to an intermediate from which you can react with diazomethane to get the your Fischer carbene species. This is a very easy synthesis and of course you need to handle it little carefully but overall it is relatively easier synthesis. So that is one of the synthesis for the Fischer carbene. Now we will look at the one of the synthesis of Strock carbene. So Strock carbene was not really a planned synthesis. It, it was Richard Strock when he was at um, DuPont. He was trying to synthesize a different complex, we will come in a moment, but accidentally he has discovered a, a very interesting complex which then later came to fame and known as Strock carbene. It is the tantalum complex that was uh, studied at, at that point at DuPont by uh, Richard Strock, where we will see the accidental synthesis that has revolutionized this area of organometallic chem complexes and subsequent chemistry to give the metathesis reactions. Now Strock carbene. It was discovered in 1974, once again Richard Schrock was at that point at DuPont scientist, later on he moved to of course as right now he is at MIT, before that he was at DuPont. So neopentyl 3 tantanum chloride complex he was studying and he was interested in reacting with lithium neopentanyl complex. The idea was to get NP5 tantalum complex. Instead, well, what he actually got is a history and that is neopentyl TA3 instead of penta neopentyl tantalum complex, he got this tris neopentyl tantalum complex with the carbene center attached with the tantalum. Of course, tantalum is in 5 oxidation state. Similar reagent one can think of that can have this uh, type of behavior or similar behavior as rock carbene could be your Tebes reagent where this CP2 titanium can be attached with aluminum and overall you can have a reaction where this is CP2 titanium double bond okay, or carbene center. Most often nowadays the one carbene or Strock carbene that mostly familiar people familiar with are the one with the molybdenum complex where this molybdenum is in plus 6 oxidation state and alkylidin we have this counterpart where this isopropyl and two do isopropyls are associated with the with this uh, amine center and your metal is associated with two alkoxide where R this alkoxide R is CMECF32. So this this is the modern day Strock catalyst where Strock carbene as you see was first discovered although accidentally in 1974 at DuPont where penta neopentyl tantalum complex was planned to synthesize starting from the tris neopentyl tantalum dichloride species by reacting with neopentyl chloride. Unfortunately or I would say rather fortunately we did not see the synthesis of or we did not get the tris from the tris 
neopentyl spaces to penta neopentyl tantalum spaces. Instead, what we ended up getting is the one of the neopentyl of the neopentyl lithium reacting with the tantalum dichloride to give the tantalum 4 neopentyl species, the fifth neopentyl one abstract from the alpha carbon C H bond to give the neopentyl 3 of them on the tantalum and the other one is now associated with the tantalum center in a double bond or so called stroke carbene fashion. Now, this was the initial discovery till then numerous progress has been made the, the one with which we are mostly familiar with as a stroke carbene or the one we have molybdenum complex, molybdenum is in plus 6 oxidation state as you have seen we have we have the, the nitrogen associated with the molybdenum and uh, these two diisopropyls are bulky substituent on this on this amine and we have the carbene center right over here where this is nucleophilic in nature and the as you have seen there is no pi acceptor or pi donor ligand in the whole complex. We have the alkoxide complex where R is a, again a bulky one tertiary carbon center with CME CF32. Another carbene which you are often familiar with is the one we have which is most popular I would say at this point that is the Grubbs one. Okay. As you look at the when Grubbs started out his career, he did not have his carbon to start with the reactivity. He was initially working with the stroke carbon later on he came up with a very modified and versatile version of the carbon which came to fame as, as, as the Grubbs catalyst as you know it and there are different generation of the Grubbs catalyst that we have in the market. Now, the one in the Grubbs catalyst we, we need to discuss that is the one which is most popular. We have this ruthenium complex once again this is of stroke carbon type where you have ruthenium attached with the carbon center this is again nucleophilic in nature and you have PCY3 dichloro species attached with it and two of them sorry PCY3. So, this is the one which is known as Grubbs and this was first discovered in 1993 and uh, you have you have of course, different other ligands are also used for this for this Grubbs catalyst. Now, as you know this is the stock carbon covers also the Grubbs this catalyst because this carbon center is nucleophilic in nature as you have seen first example was in 1974 and later on Grubbs comes at 1993 to come up with his own modified and the very reactive version of, of the stroke carbon which is known to the literature as Grubbs catalyst or Grubbs different generation of catalyst. Later on, as you know, both of them came, came and uh, came and developed this field quite beautifully to give the field the prominence. And nowadays, the organic synthesis or even any synthetic chemist cannot think of doing a complicated molecule synthesis without utilizing the great nature or great behavior of these two carbene complexes. We will now look at little bit at the their reactivity pattern. So, we will look at the application of, of this specifically um, you know the Fischer carbene and the Stroke carbene. First we will discuss the one where we have the metathesis reaction. So, we will have two important two important carbon carbon bond formation process that will go on for the metathesis reaction. If you start with one olefin where two different substituents are there let us say R and R 
and you have another olefin where once again two different substituents are there R prime and R prime. Now, if you react it with the Schrock carbon or so to speak nowadays Grubbs catalyst or Schrock catalyst or Schrock carbon usually you will get an exchange of partner where one half of the olefin will be exchanged with the another half to give you the mixture of this compound, the final compound where one half is associated with the double bond of one carbon or of one olefin, the other half is associated with the other olefin. Now, this metal is used as a catalyst and often it is done under thermal reaction control. Of course, it can be reversible in nature. These carbon-carbon double bond as you know these are 150 kcal per mole and doing this reaction breaking and do, doing these reactions are quite interesting because you are breaking a 150 kcal per mole that those co compounds with the double bond in, uh, in there and you are exchanging the, the exchanging the partners at room temperature. How how these reactions are possible at room temperature has got the imagination of, of the whole science, whole chemistry community. This is because the, uh, the very reactive nature of the carbon that helps them to undergo a 2 plus 2 reaction first. We will see in a, the latter next class where 2 plus 2 reaction first and then a retro 2 plus 2 eventually gives an intermediate which leads to the final product. So, for this class what we have seen so far is the two most prominent or the two known classes of carbene namely Fischer carbene and Stroke carbene with one example is we have tried to show the characteristic feature of both these carbenes Fischer carbene and the Stroke carbene. As you have seen Fischer carbene carbon center is electrophilic in nature and Stroch carbene carbon center is nucleophilic in nature. Their synthesis you have seen also are of different in nature. You have chromia, chromium hexacarbonyl species for example, to start with which was reacted with phenyl lithium to give you the Fischer carbene. On the other hand, Stroch carbene which was discovered rather accidentally at the beginning which you have seen the earlier transition metals such as tantalum in a very high oxidation state starting from a tantalum dichloride tris neopentyl species. We have seen lithium neopentyl gives you the corresponding Schrock carbon version. This Schrock carbon once again is nucleophilic in nature. Most importantly Schrock carbon also covers that is Grubbs known as Grubbs catalyst where we have both the Schrock carbon the original Schrock version and the, the subsequent modified version which is nowadays are very popular in molybdenum in 6 plus oxidation state. This molybdenum catalyst as well as Grubbs ruthenium based catalyst most often are widely used and there are certain benefits of each of these two different types of um, Schrock carbon I would say both the fish uh, the both the Grubbs version and the Schrock's own version. We, we, we do see the reactivity difference in, in uh, quite a, a lot of cases. We will discuss this reactivity of those uh, Fischer and the Schrock catalyst and we will get into the 2 plus 2 and retro 2 plus 2 and subsequent transformation to give the value added product synthesis in the next class. All right, till then keep reading, we will get back soon and we will discuss the reactivity pattern of these carbenes mainly the Schrock carbenes and the Fischer carbenes and most importantly we will discuss also the reactivity of the Grubbs catalyst. Okay, till then bye bye.